Well, it's certainly big. Ooh, lots of room. There's so much space. The new Kia Carnival Platinum Diesel is big on space. That's not all it has to offer. And I've been driving it for the last week with my family to see what sets it apart. How much is this big boy going to cost? Well, this is the top of the line model for the Carnival range and will set you back around $68,000 before on-road costs. It's roughly on par with the Hyundai Staria and a tad more expensive than newcomer LDV Miva. But you get some really good features in here. Not one, but two sunroofs. Heated and ventilated front seats, heated steering wheel, heated outboard seats in the middle row and electric sliding doors to make kid life that much easier. There's not a lot on the market that seems to compete with the luxury factor that this model offers, nor do they seem as smartly dressed. For a soccer mom style car, this is actually pretty good looking. And with the eight seats and luxury tickets, you do feel like you're getting bang for your buck here. If you want more details, check out my full review at carsguide.com.au. It's big, but how big? I'd be seeing if this even fits into your garage because it sits at over five meters in length, 5,155 millimeters to be exact. Also make sure that you have enough clearance for the boot lid when you reverse into a spot and you have to load in the gear. It certainly has a large curbside impression, but it remains very handsome because it's not blocky looking. There's also some sexy accents with the chrome and the 19 inch black alloy wheels that give it some style cred. And style is not something I usually associate with people movers. The interior looks fantastic. And I love the 12.3 inch touchscreen multimedia system. Very easy to use. The instrument panel isn't fully digital, but I don't mind it. But I do love that you don't have to leave your driver's seat if you need to access the controls for the rear sliding doors or the power tailgate, which makes the school kiss and drop very simple. There's a lovely mix of materials in here and soft touch points that make the cabin feel refined. I would have liked a darker headliner only because kids just tend to touch them a lot and in my car, this would get fingerprints on it very quickly. It has loads of space in here. Plenty of headroom, legroom and elbow room. Honestly, it feels so luxurious that I feel like a passenger in a limo and that's a fantastic experience. There's heaps of storage with plenty of pockets and cubbies, device holders and cup holders in each row. You also get seven USB-A ports and two 12 volt ports scattered throughout the car so everyone can stay charged up on the go. The touchscreen, like I said, has been easy to use. I love that it has built-in sat-nav and the wired Apple CarPlay and Android Auto has been simple to connect to. It's just a shame that at this price point and grade level, it wasn't wireless. The middle row is really comfy and my son loved the amenities back here. Some of the highlights for him were the retractable sun blinds, the climate control and the well-positioned directional air vents. Just a note on the retractable sun blinds though is that they do create a bit of a blind spot for the driver. And I think that the climate control could have been better positioned in the middle so all the passengers could have easy access to it. This row has three Isofix child seat mounts plus three top tethers and it's wide enough that you should be able to fit three child seats side by side. A special mention to the 172 millimeter ground clearance because it makes it very easy to get in and out of this car, something that my six year old loved as well. Because the seats are so wide and comfy, it means that an adult can get back in here and help with a squalling infant or young toddler if need be on a longer trip. I also really love the hardened kick plates, which are always practical when you have little ones around. There's actually an okay amount of space back here for me. I'm 168 centimeters or five foot six. Taller occupants might not wanna be in here on a long stretch, but the amenities are really good for a third row. You have directional air vents, reading lights, USB ports, cup holders, snack trays, and retractable sun blinds. So those stuck back here won't feel like they're missing out. This has two Isofix child seat mounts and two top tethers, which should delight growing families. Still, even though it's easy to get in and out of this row, I wouldn't be strapping in a baby back here. Leave this to the older kids who can strap themselves in. The boot is a delight. With all three rows in use, you get a massive 627 litres worth of capacity. 
When you fold these down, they nest in this deep footwell here, creating a level load space. Now my sister-in-law has the exact same model and uses these great pockets on the side as a permanent nappy changing station. Also, this big boot lid provides excellent rain cover if you ever need it. If you do need some extra storage space, you can store the third row and bump it up to 2,785 litres. And that's without even folding the second row yet. So you're gonna be fine with storage options. The compromise to getting all of this space is that you only get a temporary space saver spare tire. It's also been handy having the power tailgate this week. This model has a 2.2 litre four cylinder turbo diesel engine with a maximum output of 148 kilowatts and 440 newton metres of torque. It's powerful enough that you don't feel like you're hauling a big body around. It's actually pretty nimble for its size. Combined with the eight speed auto transmission, that grunty engine makes for a very pleasant driving experience. It's powerful, but is it efficient? Well, the official combined fuel cycle is 6.5 litres per 100 kilometres. And after driving just over 800 kilometres this week, my trip computer was reading 6.7 litres. So yeah, it's better than some hybrids on the market. I expect that figure to be a little bit higher in the city, but you're not gonna be wincing when you hit the Bowser in this. I really enjoyed driving this this week. It's a very smooth ride and absorbs the bumps. The powerful engine also makes it quite responsive in most conditions, but I was quite choosy with when I zipped across traffic just because of how long it is. The cabin is really quiet, but it can get a little bit noisy at higher speeds, only because of the wind factor. But if the third row is struggling to hear, you can throw your voice back there by the speakers and passenger talk function. This is long, but the turning circle is actually pretty good at 11.7 meters, meaning you can tackle any car park with relative ease. I do recommend that you reverse into a spot only because the visibility at the front is so much better when you pull out. If you do need to reverse out of a spot, the rear cross traffic alert and 360 degree view camera makes light work of it. I also really love how clear the reversing camera image is. It's a really great feature. This has the safety features I always like to see on a family car, but some special mentions to the driver fatigue monitoring system and rear child occupant alert. Always good to have on longer trips or if you're forgetful, the Carnival got a maximum five-star ANCAP safety rating in 2021. Surprisingly, it only has seven airbags, but that does include a driver's knee airbag and curtain airbags covering all three rows. It is missing the newer front center airbag though. And it's also missing a feature that I like to have, which is the blind spot camera view monitor that you often see on top Kia models. And I hope that Kia brings this on future installments. The full safety specs are in my written review at carsguide.com.au. The ongoing costs for the Carnival are pretty good because it comes with Kia's better than average for the market seven year unlimited kilometre warranty. It has a cap price servicing program for up to seven years or 105,000 kilometres, whichever occurs first. Services average $545, which is competitive for the market and servicing intervals are also good at every 12 months or 15,000 kilometres, whichever occurs first. Kia have dubbed the Carnival as a grand utility vehicle, and I think that's an apt description. The space inside will excite families and all occupants will be fairly comfortable. You might even get less sibling squabbles in the back seat because of the sheer number of amenities. The boot space was very practical and the turbo diesel powertrain was very efficient this week. The driving experience was smooth, but I would have liked a few very small minor improvements throughout, but this still gets an easy nine and a half out of 10 from me. My son absolutely loved this car and wanted to touch every single button he could. He also wanted me to fit his child seat in every position possible so he could really test the car mummy. I am definitely a pro at fitting my child seat now and he easily gives it a 10 out of 10. If you're after more details, check out the full review at carsguide.com.au and I'll see you next week.